OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this OTAN Tech Talk. My name is Christy Reyes, and today I'm going to go over some Canvas basics. This is the agenda. This session will cover making a new course in the free Canvas portal at canvas.instructure.com. We're going to talk about adding a course card, creating your profile, selecting very basic setting, settings in the navigation, and adding a redirect app, making a home page. Then I'm going to take you through creating a very simple module with the following, an opening page, a discussion, a quiz, an assignment, and an external link. Um, I'll talk a little bit about giving feedback with the speed grader on students submitted assignments and how students can view the feedback. That's really important because they can't always find the feedback if we don't show them. And um, I'll also talk about making and using a rubric because that's a very simple and fast way to give students feedback on assignments and a little bit more information about Canvas as well. So what can we use Canvas for besides teaching online? Well, it's perfect for delivering online or hybrid instruction. Hybrid meaning that perhaps students come face to face to a classroom um, or you're teaching synchronously online. And the other part of the time, they are working more independently in this online environment. That's hybrid. Of course, fully online, Asynchronous means that uh, they are working independently with different learning activities in Canvas. But Canvas can also be used as a repository for your program, um, all the documents that you share instead of sharing multiple times and losing those emails that have the important files that you're looking for, or if you're working together on a committee or some other group. You can easily create a Canvas um, shell and share and keep those documents there. It's a great way for members of a group or com uh, com uh, committee to communicate asynchronously and keep informed. And it's a place to share ideas for teaching, as I'd like to show you now. So this is um, my agency's um, Canvas uh, subscription service. So I work um, in a consortium that um, is part of a community college district. So we have um, a little bit different from the free version. We have this version of Canvas. And our courses uh, that we teach are populated automatically with uh, students who are enrolled in our classes, which is a little bit different from the free version. So um, I'm not going to open all of these courses, but as you can see, I have some published um, courses in my dashboard. One committee that I serve on is the Tenure Review and Evaluation Committee. And within this course, you can see there's a small one. That means there's an announcement. Whenever you see uh, that little icon with the loudspeaker, that means some announcement has been shared in that course. And in this committee, we share um, agendas, um, we share uh, committee meeting minutes, um, we share the Zoom link for our meetings and resources. Um, uh, going down, this is the professional development um, portal for our entire college. So here we uh, can find all kinds of different um, professional development opportunities listed, um, if they are offered online, the Zoom links, how we can register, and how we can report our required professional development hours. So that is another way that um, my school is using Canvas outside of teaching. Um, going up here to the right, I will show you what my program um, does to use Canvas. So I'm in a non-credit ESL um, department. And here on our homepage, we're in, we're in the instructor view. So when we go to student view, we don't see everything in the navigation. 
But um, just in the instructor view, this is what we see. What we use in our department, um, we use Canvas to store our EL Civics instructor and teacher packets and resources and materials that teachers have created for supplemental teaching resources to go along with the EL Civics. We also share tech tips and resources and anytime we have any sort of department presentation or professional development, any of those documents or resources are also shared. And as I said, instead of constantly um, sharing things by email, whenever there is something that comes across in the email um, for student support, we share those flyers and um, information here in one spot so you don't have to be searching your email to find those. Um, another thing that I'd like to share over here is on the far right in our global navigation, or in our navigation here, we've added a redirect and we have a Google Calendar for professional development. So whenever we see something come across from OTAN or CalPRO or CASAs or other groups like CAPE, we um, post those professional development opportunities in the calendar so our teachers can be informed of what's going on to um, as far as activities and workshops and so forth that they can take advantage of. So that is um, how we use um, Canvas outside of teaching. I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and we're gonna return to that in a moment. So i like you to um, go through a Canvas demo with me. I'm going to use the free version, as I mentioned, and anyone can sign up, any teacher can sign up for a free account. Um, when you get to the page canvas.instructure.com, you can see this visual that says need a Canvas account, click here, it's free. So let's go ahead and go there. So here we are, you can see, um, thank you, Google Chrome has saved my login and password. Um, so uh, all I need to do is log in because I already have an account. I'm going to log in now. And you can see that um, I attended um, a conference, Arizona TESOL, and they put all of their schedule into a Canvas course where um, the presenters could upload their slides and their handouts. So there is yet another use of Canvas. So you can see I have here a, a sandbox. I have imported from Canvas Commons some different courses to explore as well. So those are the published courses. And here are some unpublished courses that I have taught in the past and I just um, copy these courses here for safekeeping. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a brand new course. So there are a couple of places where I can do this. Okay, so one thing first to mention is that um, there are two ways you can start a new course. You can go to the right side where it says start a new course and click there. That's the easy way to create a new course shell. And what a shell is, you can, uh, you can infer from the word shell. It's just an empty course. So I can click there. The other way I can create a new course shell is go to courses all courses and plus course. And now I will give this a course name. I'm going to call it my summer level seven class, okay? And then I click on create. Now it has created my course shell. And immediately it went to my settings and it's asking me, to choose an image. This image is called the course card. So when students log into Canvas, they may be taking multiple courses and this will be serving as a visual for them to easily find the class. 
So I used the website Canva, C-A-N-V-A, Canva, to create a logo. Canva is completely free, has many beautiful designs for all kinds of things. And I created um, a logo that could serve as the course card. And I have it saved on my desktop. So I just created it and um, with a free account to Canva, I downloaded it as an image, but you can see I have another option. I can search for images that are um, unlicensed, they're free for use from Unsplash, but I'm going to use something that I created. It's kind of like my personal brand. So I'm gonna uh, browse to my desktop and I have it right here, my canvas card. And here it comes, it's uploading, waiting for that circle to finish up uploading. And there it is, there is my class image. So when students log in, they will um, have a visual to know this is the class if they're enrolled in multiple classes. There are a few other things we can do in the settings. So um, we can set, um, a start and end time of the course, and um, we can choose our licensing for the course, we can add a description, and so forth. I'm not going to change all of those things now, but I'm just going to click on update course details in the bottom right. Okay, now within the settings, there are a few other things that I could do. Um, one thing that I'm going to do is go to navigation. Navigation are the items that students see. Right now, they will have be able to see a homepage, discussion, grades, people, files, syllabus, rubrics. That's just too many. I want them to simply be able to go into a module and maybe see announcements and their grades maybe people. So what I can do is go to navigation because right now what I see at the top is way too many things. Students start clicking around in files and people and discussions, they're going to get lost. So what you do, I, I've heard a good number is seven, but you want the fewer things in the navigation, the fewer menu items, the better for students. Students don't need analytic, analytics, so I'm going to drag that down. They don't need attendance, collaborations, big blue button. I want them to be able to go to modules, quizzes. No, I'm gonna put the quiz within the module. They don't need to see the rubrics. Those are attached to assignments, outcomes. Um, syllabus, I, I distribute the syllabus or have it as a link on the homepage usually, so no. Files. Pages, no, I put the pages within a module. I might want them to see people, I want them to see grades, discussions, no, assignments, no. This is a nice number of items. Homepage, announcements, grades, people, modules. Okay, so I'm going to add one more thing though. One important step, you're dragging items from the top to the bottom to hide, but one important step, is to then save at the bottom. Now, students will only see a few items in their menu and they won't be clicking everywhere and getting lost within the course. Okay, one more thing that I want to do is I wanna add one more thing in the menu items that doesn't appear there. Because perhaps I want to include a link to our program website or a resource that um, is important for students to have. Or maybe there is a website that I want students to use often. Um, so I'm going to go to apps and you can see there are integrations with many different apps. I don't know if you've even you know, heard of all of these, there, there are so, so many. Um, but what I'm going to choose is the redirect app. So I already have it there. I type in redirect and I click on redirect tool. This is going to allow me 
to add in, um, a menu item that is customized to anything I want it to be. So I click there after I type redirect and I click add app. And I like my students to use this dictionary, for example. So I have the website URL. I copy that and I paste it right here. And um, I guess I want to force it open in a new tab and I want to show it in the course navigation. And then I add the app. Okay, I'm going to do a refresh. And um, I think I didn't name it correctly because it should say the name of the site. Let me try that one more time. So I go here and I type in redirect, redirect tool, add app. And see, I forgot to change the name. So good lesson. So Britannica dictionary, and then I copy and paste, add, add app, and then it will appear. There we go with the name. Anyway, <laughs> so um, that is how you can customize the menu items, okay? So next, we will begin to build the course. Before we do that, one thing I wanna mention, let's say that I already have courses that I've created in the past and I don't wanna build a brand new course. Well, what I do is I import, you see on the right, side, there is import course content. And I can click there and I can go to content type, select one drop down arrow, and I can select copy a Canvas course. And then I can select one of these courses that I've already created and I can import the content. I can choose which content I want to import as well, but I'm not gonna do that today. Today, I want to show you how to build a course from scratch. So I'm gonna to go to my homepage and there's nothing there because I have to build my homepage, okay? So I have an outline of my homepage and a module with different items. So I've kind of sketched out what I want my homepage to look like on a Google Doc or a Word file. And one thing I would mention is when you use bullets and numbers, you probably want to take those formatting um, features out before copying and pasting into Canvas because sometimes formatting does not copy well, okay? So here is my sample front page and I didn't format it in any special way at this point. So what I need to do to build a front, a home page, is I need to go to pages on the left menu item. Okay, no pages are created yet. So I need to go to the right plus page. And this is where I will give it a title. And I'll probably just put welcome to level seven. Okay, something like that. Okay. And here now I have um, some information I want to copy. I'm going to copy that. And you see it's very basic, no formatting yet. I'm going to copy the course description and some information about the class. And I have a video I want to put in, uh, a welcome video as well. Okay, one thing you saw is I wanna put in my picture. It's very important if you're teaching online, especially if it's a 100% asynchronous online, is to have instructor presence in your course. Your students wanna see you, they wanna hear you. So welcome videos. Um, introductions to yourself, a little bit of information that personalization will make the online course less isolating and will help students persist and feel more welcome. Okay, so I'm going to put my image right here. Okay, so here is my toolbar 
And you can see when I mouse over these, I can see this is links, this is images. When I click the drop down, I can upload an image. Course images are images I've already uploaded to the course. And user images are images I already have uploaded within Canvas, within this particular version of Canvas. I have not uploaded this image before, so I need to upload it. Again, I get the options of unsplash or I can paste the URL of an image, but I'm going to upload. Here's my image. And um, I have an alt text already. To be compliant, I need to give an alt text for screen readers to be 508 compliant. I'm just going to put photo of Misty Reyes, the instructor. If it's a decorative ima uh, image, you can check that. And here we go. I'm going to click on submit. And naturally, the photo is going to be very large. I don't want it that large. Displaying this on a telephone would look crazy large. So I'm going to click on the image. You can see there are image options. If I forgot to put in the alt text, I can click on the image and go to image options. I can customize the size here. Or a simple way that I do it is I just click on the image, go to a corner, and drag it to be a, a lot smaller like that. Okay. All right. Now, as far as the formatting of the text, you're not going to use font size. You should use headings and styles, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think what I'll do here is I will give this a heading like that. I'll give this a heading three and I'll see, okay, here's class information. I'll give that a heading three as well. Maybe I'll bold some of these things, right? Phone number, office hours. So anyway, that's how you can do that. You can use colors. Remember that you shouldn't, you should use high contrast. So it should be a dark color on a light color or a or vice versa. Okay. Um, and you should not use colors to convey meaning. Right. So those are part of, um, of being accessible online. Um, one more thing. I created a video that I uploaded to YouTube. It's a welcome video for my students. I have the link right here. Okay. So I'm going to copy that link. Embedding a video is not hard on Canvas. It just takes a couple of steps, especially the first time. So here on my toolbar, there is this um, app icon, and it looks like a plug. When I mouse over it, it says apps. So the first time I use this, I'll need to click the drop down arrow and choose view all. This is the first time for me to use this. And I don't see it. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to go to look for YouTube. Oh, wow. OK, so this is different from my school version. So I don't see it. So this version, free version, does not have the app for YouTube installed. It only has Commons, Favorites, Google Hangouts, Meets, and Microsoft. So in that case, what I need to do is embed. So if you're using your school version, that's how you do this. So here's my video. There's the ad. Okay. I want to go to share. And now I need to look for the embed code right here. Okay. And I'm going to select the embed code and copy. Okay. And so how do I embed here? Underneath this text box, we have some different icons. One is the toggle for the embed code. 
it is a greater or e uh, greater or greater than or less than sign with a slash in the middle, and it's right here. Okay, so it's the HTML editor. I'm going to click on that. Oh my goodness, look at all that embed code. Well, I remember that I want to put my video at the very bottom. So this is where you, you can get a little bit lost in coding, but I remember I want that embed code at the very bottom of the page. So I'm going to do a control V paste. And now I will toggle back out and I'm gonna check, did, oh, it did it. Yay, look at that, there's my video. One last thing to show you in the page editing views is this little symbol. When I mouse over it, it looks like a circle with um, a figure of a human being, arms outstretched. When I mouse over it, it says accessibility checker. Let's see if this home page is accessible. Yay! It's accessible. I, I have no problems. If a student were to visit this page and use a screen reader because of a disability like vision problems, this would be accessible to the student. I'm going to now save and publish. I'm not done yet, though. okay? One more thing that I need to do, because look, when I click my homepage, oh, what? I thought I created my homepage. There's one more thing I need to do to make that page my homepage. I need to go to pages. Okay, so I have gone to pages, view all pages. And I can see that this uh, page that I created, my home page, is published with that green check, but I need to make it my front page. So I'm going to go to the right with the three dots, and I'm going to click the three dots, and I see edit, delete, and there it is, use as front page. So I'm going to click on that. But now there's still one more step because when I go to home, it's not appearing as the home page. That's because I need to publish. And when I click on publish, it gives me options for which page I want to publish. I'm going to choose pages front page. There we go. And now I select choose and publish. And now I have my front page, my home page. Okay. So now we're going to start creating a module. And um, I guess I put modules hidden. I usually also put something on my home page directing students to each weekly module. So you see here, I didn't do it here. I usually use a button that says week one, week two. And I put the words here, but I didn't do this because creating buttons is maybe a part two of this. That takes a lot of time. Um, I usually say here, select the week number below or modules to the left. So I think I would need to unhide, make vis visible in my settings modules. Right now I have it hidden. It's not vis visible to students, but it's really nice a lot of times to just have the week number right here on the front page. So students are not confused about where to go and what to do, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click modules. And I am going to start my first module. In the top right, plus module. I'm going to call this week one, geography. Wonders of the world, okay? And there are different options, like I can lock this so that students cannot access it until a certain date. So different teachers have different feelings about that. Sometimes they release the whole entire course, all of the content at once, so that students can pace themselves and see what, 
what kind of um, workload they have. Other teachers release one week at a time, and that's what I usually do. So I'm going to um, add module, and how I release one week at a time is not by locking, but just pub, um, keeping unpublished a week and just publishing it um, each Sunday, for example. So I'm going to click add module. So there are different ways that we can do this. I can start creating the different assignments and, and pages and quizzes and later add them. Or I can go here to the plus button, okay? So different, different methods. I can create a page and later add it, or I can create the page within the module right away. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to save time. So I'm gonna create a page to give students understanding of what this module is about. So an overview and objectives. Instead of just a bunch of links and assignments, we need to give students an understanding of what they're going to learn and do, okay? So I clicked on, let me do that one more time. I clicked on the plus. I can click the down arrow to see what different options I have. I click on page and then I click on create page and I'm going to give it a name like this. Objectives for this module, something like that, okay? And you can see you can indent things so maybe you want um, left alignment for your objectives and maybe you want each assignment or quiz or, you know, indented a bit. I usually don't do much with in the indentation. I'm going to click add. And now here's my page, but I need to, I need to add things to the page. So I'm going to click on that. And I have my, um, my information, okay? So um, hello and welcome, paste that in. Oops, sorry. So I need to click on edit. Okay, and instead of bolding that, I think I'm gonna make that like a heading two. It's a little bit big, but that's okay. I can, um, later I'm gonna see what it looks like on my phone and my tablet, you know, um, that's always a good um, practice. I had a picture right here to kind of give students a visual. So remember, I go to this image icon. I can upload, I can use course images. I'm gonna upload that image real quick. Okay, um, actually I don't have that image. Let's, let's search Unsplash, see what happens. Wonders of the world. Mm, which one would be interesting? Let's use Machu Picchu. And it's gigantic once again, so I can click on image options and change the pixels there or just resize by dragging. And um, let me make sure that that, oh, thank you. Unsplash, give me an alt text, Machu Picchu, Peru during daytime. Thank you, Unsplash. I don't have to worry about the accessibility of that image. It has a built-in alt tag when I use Unsplash. Let me go back to my text. So, um, oh, look at those bullets. I think I wanna take out the bullets because they won't look good when I copy and paste in. So I'm going to go ahead. You can see I have objectives and I go like this. I'm gonna copy all of this in right here. And maybe I wanna make this like a heading three, maybe make this a heading four, okay? And now, now is where I make these bulleted. I don't see the bullets here. Well, I need to go to the far right, the three dots more, and that's where I can see bullets. There we go. Okay, and then the students get started and I have a hyperlink to a video. To make a hyperlink is very easy. You just select some text and then you go to here and you choose external link, but really nice. Um, I'll go back to my homepage at the end and show you how you can make a course link, okay? So um, then here I put in some text. So when I go back to embed this video, 
I already showed you how to embed video with the HTML toggle. So I'm not going to do that now, but um, I put some text. So when I'm looking at all of that coding, I can see where I want to put that embed code. And then I would come back and take out these words. So let's just say you have a TED talk or um, I have a different source that I have um, for uploading my video. You're just always looking for the embed code. So here it is. You see this embed code. That's what I copy and paste for embedding. So you already saw that with the YouTube. I'm gonna, to save time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna show you one more thing here. Where it says options, add to student to-do list. When you check that, you can set a date. So let's say I want students to read this page, for example, by the end of day Friday. I can set a date and a specific time and click done. Then when students log in, on the right side of uh, their uh, dashboard, when they log into Canvas, they're going to see a list of things they need to do and the due dates. It kind of helps them stay organized. I'm going to go ahead and save. I'm not going to publish yet. I'm going to publish the entire module all at once. Okay. So there's my opening, you know, objectives and the first activity. So next, what I'm going to create after that is a discussion. Okay, so now I have a sa sample discussion. I have lots of questions for students to answer. And for a discussion to work, teachers, you need to model responses and make the expectations clear. So for example, I said that I want students to reply by Friday at 11.55 p.m. And I want them to write complete sentences. I want them, there, there are 10 questions, they only need to answer three. And then by Sunday at 11.55 p.m., I want them to reply to two classmates and how they do that. You can add a rubric to a discussion, but I've included the rubric within the discussion um, within the discussion instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this. This is this is my discussion prompt, and I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go back to my module modules, and I'm going to go to the plus next to the title of my module. And instead of assignment, I'm gonna choose discussion, create topic, and I'm gonna put geography favorite places. Okay, and I add it. Now I need to click on the title of that discussion and I need to then click on edit and I'm going to paste in. Now, I, as I said, <laughs> I'm, um, I would wanna take out those bullets and manually do the bullets and take out the numbers and manually put in, uh, put in the numbers with the formatting. But to save time, I'm just going to, to leave it like this. Um, sometimes when you just copy and paste, the formatting does not look good, but I'm just to save time, okay? So now um, I'm going to allow threaded replies. I'm going to um, grade this. You can make it a group discussion. I'm going to give it five points, for example. Um, when students see their grades, they can see it as a percentage, complete, incomplete, points, a letter grade, GPA, no, but I'm just going to use points. And then you can put it within a different grouping. I'm just going to leave that you can see there are other options. I'm going to give them a due date. Okay, so they have to do this by next Thursday, done. And um, now, because I've given it a due date, it's going to, re it's going to appear on their to-do list. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Okay, let me go back to my modules. And here's my module. I have an opening page. I have a discussion. 
Um, next, what I'm going to do is create a quiz. I'm going to create a very simplistic quiz just to show you um, a couple of the question types, but um, there's a lot you can do with the quizzes, okay? So I'm going to click on the plus. I'm gonna go to quiz, create quiz. And I, the, the grammar focus here um, with this unit was present and past passive quiz. Okay. When you start building lots of content, you'll want to really come up with a good naming system for your assignments, your quizzes, and discussions. I'm not really modeling that here because maybe you have reading quizzes, maybe you have grammar quizzes, depending on your content. Maybe you have a quiz called unit one. So um, just to let you know, depending on your, on your subject area, you should come up with a good naming quizzes, uh, naming um, nomenclature you know, formula for all of your content. So um, I will probably just add this grammar quiz as opposed to listening quiz or reading quiz or whatever, okay? So I'm going to add that. All right, so now I'm going to add items to that quiz. So there are different options for the quiz that I'll look at in a moment. But first I need to edit and create some questions, okay? So details, I can put some instructions in this area. So, um, you know, maybe I wanna put some instructions about how to take the quiz or um, where in the textbook to review or things like that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on the questions. And you can create banks of questions, and then you could go and search for your questions. But because this is a brand new course, I don't have any questions at all. So I'm going to add a new question. And so here I can see there's multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, fill in multiple blanks, multiple answers, drop downs, matching, numerical answer, that would be very helpful in math, formula, essay. Now let me just say that essay, the computer can't check that, okay? So when you include an essay question or a text question or a file upload, those are questions that your students may be asking you, when am I going to see my grade for this quiz? Well, it's because the teacher needs to go in and manually uh, correct or give feedback on those question types. I'm just gonna do a multiple choice, okay? And I have a couple of multiple choice questions here. So this is grammar. And I did put some quiz instructions, select the best verb form. Okay, so that's what I would to go back. And you, you can select different points for point values for different types of questions. So I'm not gonna include the number. I'm going to copy that. Okay, like that. And this is multiple choice. And then I see um, I can have different numbers of choices. So if I want, automatically it's giving me four. If I only want three distractors or choices, I can, I can go over here and I can choose the garbage can and delete one of the distractors. I think I'll do that just to save time. So I have. Here's my correct answer. Was the bill, bridge built? Okay. My second one is, is the bridge built? The bridge was built. And I'll just leave off the last one. Well, let's say that, let's say that the second one is the correct answer. Then I need to choose that arrow the green and the arrow becomes green, okay? But that one's the correct one. When I click that arrow, I mean, I'm sorry, that box, then I can give feedback. So if the student uh, selects the correct answer, I can type in some encouragement like, yes, that's correct. Well done. And I can click done. 
Um, for these, I could, if they're incorrect, no, not quite right. Review and try again. And I'll just copy that. Done. And I can do the same for this. And done. Now, one important thing is you always need to click update question or the question will not be saved. Click that, update question. Okay, the question is saved. I see it there, okay? So then I can add more questions. Same thing, I add, click on new question. Let's say I do a, a true or false. This sentence is correct. And so just true or false. This is the correct answer, true. This is false. I can give feedback. I'll just, so I'll just very simply, okay? Two questions. Now I need to save my quiz. So I go here to that blue save button in the bottom right, save. And one thing I see, it's only two points. Well, let's say I want to go back and I want to make one of the questions more points. I go back to questions and this one's only one point. Well, this one, let's say I want to give it more points. I can give that question two points. And then update question. And maybe this question, I only want it to be a half a point, point 0.5. And update question. And then save again. So different questions can have different point values, okay? So there are many different question types. Just wanna give you a quick look at the quizzes. Um, one thing then, finally, you can preview. I always recommend because especially if you're doing this, maybe on the weekend, creating a quiz from home, um, what happens to me, I sometimes get interrupted. I walk away, I come back and I've chosen the wrong, you know, the wrong question as correct. So preview it, make sure that you've chosen the correct answers, take the quiz yourself. Um, and then let's see here, as far as the options, shuffle answers, maybe you wanna shuffle the answers. So um, time limit, you can give a time limit. Okay, so what I wanna do here then is um, I'm going to go back to edit, and on the details, I'm going to go down. I can make it a practice quiz, but I want to keep it a graded quiz. It's going to automatically go to my grade book. Um, there are surveys and ungraded surveys as well, but I'm going to keep it as that. I want to shuffle the answers. I'm not going to give it a time limit, but I always give my students multiple attempts for quizzes. Quizzes are low stakes ways for students to confirm their understanding. I'm not making quizzes high stakes, okay? And I want the quiz score to keep, to be their highest. I want them to take the quiz again and again until they have 100%. So as many attempts as they want, they wanna take it 100 times, I tell them, please do, just get 100%. Okay, and review the ones you got wrong and ask me what, you know, questions. Um, so there are many other things like access codes, this would be more for very high stakes quizzes um, and things like that. You can um, let students see the correct answers um, only once after each attempt or um, after a certain date. I like to just let them take the quiz and see the answers after they've taken the quiz. And then um, maybe you give it a due date or make, um, make the quiz uh, available only within a certain date range. That's what the, these calendars are for. So I'll save it again. So let's go back to our module. Oh my goodness, we've done so much work here. We have created objectives page, um, a uh, page for discussion, 
we've created a very brief quiz and now we want students to put it together what they've learned in an assignment. So I'm going to click the plus next to my module title and it popped up the first option is assignment. Okay, so I'm going to click on create assignment. And um, for this assignment, let me see, what did I call it? I call this wonder of the world presentation. Okay. So that's, now they're going to take the grammar, uh, the uh, information that they have learned, and they're going to make a presentation after doing some research about some other wonder of the world, okay? So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to give the details of the assignment. So I click on it, edit. I'm going to go back to the assignment description. Okay. As I said, I would want to take off the numbering, but to save time, I will just go here. I will leave in the numbers just to save time. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that in. Um, I'm going to change this to a, make it a heading like that. Okay. And see if there's any other formatting. Maybe this one, I'll make that a heading three. Um, okay. And so here is the, the assignment. How many points? I'm gonna give it 20 points. And I wanna display the grade not as points, maybe as percentage. Sometimes we want students just to do an activity for their learning. And we just want to see that they did the activity but not necessarily grade them. That's a great time for a complete incomplete. But I'm gonna give them a percentage. Um, here is the option of not counting the assignment towards the final grade. I'm going to keep it as counted towards the final grade. Submission type. This is important. How do I want students to submit their work to me? I want them to submit their work to me in Canvas, not as a text entry because they're going to create a PowerPoint, a video, or maybe a Google slideshow. So a website URL, it could be a media recording or a file upload, okay? That's how they can submit. Um, number of attempts, well, unlimited. I could make this a group assignment and require peer reviews and things like that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to give it a due date because then it will appear on their to-do list, okay? And then I'm going to save. Okay, there's my assignment. And it's always good with an assignment to be really specific with your um, instructions. And I didn't include here, but I, um, I usually give a sample of what's expected as well. So they can visualize what the end product may look like, okay? All right. Oh my gosh, we're almost finished with this module. One last thing to include. We shouldn't just end a module like, there's your assignment, end your grade, goodbye. It's good to have students reflect. So I, you could create um, an ungraded survey, of course. I like to use Google Forms though. Why? Because then I can have a spreadsheet <laughs> and I can um, see some data and I can use that data going forward. So I have created a Google form and I'll show you that right here. Here's the link to that Google form, okay? And um, you could embed it within a page, okay, that's possible, and or just add it as an external link. I wanted to show you what an external link looks like. Okay. So I'm going to go here to my module, click the plus, and I'm going to go to external URL. Here is my Google form, and I'm going to put self evaluate, evaluation and reflection. 
And I'm going to choose load in a new tab and I'm going to add that. So there, for some reason, I copied and pasted the URL a little bit wrong as Canvas told me, but just to show you how that would look. And so now what I have is my module, okay? It's not published though. So to publish the entire module, I can publish the entire module by going to that little circle with a line through it next to the title of my module and click on publish. And it will publish everything except for the last item because the URL was not good, but it, it publishes everything. I can unpublish, maybe I wanna keep, maybe we didn't have time to get to the assignment this week. I can unpublish that and move that to next week's module, for example, or publish, unpublish, okay? Now, one last thing I wanna show you, to keep my students on track, I'm gonna go back to my homepage. To keep them on track of what to do each week, I like to put the current module on the home uh, on the home page. So I'm gonna go back and edit my homepage. And I'm going to put right here where it says, select the week number below or modules to get started. I'm going to put week one. And I'm gonna give that a little bit larger size, like a heading three. Now, how do I link to week one module? I'm going to go to the hyperlink and I'm gonna choose course links. And now I go to modules and there it is. Okay, I click on week one and I save my homepage again. Now, when students go to the homepage, they don't need to be getting lost in my menu items. They can see, oh, right here, week one, this is what I need to do this week right there, okay? So that is Canvas in a nutshell. A couple of final things to tell you. You can create group assignments. So when you create an assignment, you can set group names, you can allow students to self-assign, or um, you can assign the students to different groups and create the group structure as far as number of students and who's a leader. And you can require peer reviews. That would be great for reading or writing assignments, for example. Um, you can create rubrics with assignments. So first you need to create a rubric or a discussion. After that, you go to that assignment or the discussion, and you add a rubric under that. I'm not going to demonstrate that today because it, it is quite time consuming to create a rubric. But once you've created it, you can use it again and again for other assignments. Um, so I will show you how you can add a rubric to an assignment. So here I have an assignment and I wanna add a rubric to it. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the assignment and no, stop, stop. Okay. Right, stopping? Yeah. So here, okay, Rick, tell me when. Five, four, three, two, one. So here I have an assignment and I wanna add a rubric that I've already created. It's actually in another course. And I'm going to click on plus rubric at the bottom. And then I'm going to click find a rubric. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna look over here to a previous course where I have a, this rubric created. I'm gonna select this one. And um, I have this paragraph rubric that I'm going to select. Let me make sure it's the correct one. Yes, it is. So I'm just going to click on that and use this rubric. And now I have a rubric that I can use that is attached to the assignment and that students see. So it's very nice to be able to just, when you're grading, just to be able to simply add in point values and students know exactly what you're looking for. Let me um, show you one thing going back to my uh, other Canvas account, the free account, 
I'm going to go to my dashboard really quick. And here um, on the instructor to do list on the right, I see that I have an assignment to grade. You see this to do one grade personality paragraph. Let me show you how you grade with the speed grader. So I click on that. And um, what I would see is perhaps an uploaded document, a text entry, a, a URL for a Google Doc or something, right? So that's what I would see here. And so here um, I can give a grade. So let's say I give 100% to the student, okay? And I can add text um, comments here. Okay, I can also upload a file. Okay, that, would, that is the paper clip icon. But what's really nice is I can click on this middle icon and make a media comment. This is wonderful if you're teaching speaking pronunciation, but it's also helpful for students to hear your voice. So um, when I click that, I can see that my microphone is working and I can record um, audio with my microphone only or with video, I would choose webcam. I can also choose to simply upload audio or video for a media comment. And then the final icon that you see, it looks like a speaker right here. That's speech recognition. If you don't feel like typing in the comments, <laughs> you could say the comments and then the comments will be uh, speech to text within the comment box. And then you click submit. But now let's say that this student didn't do so well. And I'm going to give them 60%. And um, please see my comments on your Google Doc and resubmit. OK, so I added some comments. The student initially only got 60%. I'm going to submit. And now um, the student is going to see this in their grade book, and they will know that they need to maybe read a submit this assignment, okay? So that's how you give comments. This is called the speed grader, this, um, this view in the right navigation. Now, how do students see comments? So for a student to see that the instructor has graded something and to see feedback, the student can of course go to the grade book or when they log into the course next to grades, they will see this little item. And um, the student in this case sees that there is the number one. That means one assignment has a comment. So um, the student is gonna go ahead and click on that and they can see, uh oh, I have some missing assignments here, but um, I've gotten 100% on this assignment. Wow. And the, the two little icons uh, that look like speech bubbles, when I click on that, I can see the teacher gave me the comment of great work. I feel really good about that. But I have a lot more work to do. Look at all of those things. Um, so far though, I have 100%. Okay, so that's how we need to show students how they can check their feedback. They can always go to the grade book, but um, they will see when there is a comment by seeing a number next to the grades. All right, so we're almost wrapping up here. And um, so then um, using an assignment rubric, um, once you've added a rubric uh, to an assignment, um, you will go to see what assignments have been submitted. And you see that on your to-do list. So then you can um, click on your to-do list for assignments that have been submitted. You go to speed grader, and then you click on view rubric, okay? And then all you need to do with your rubric then, it's quite simple. 
and nice is you can add in the points and save. You also want to add some text comments, I'm sure, too. So we're almost finished here. And um, a final couple of uh, tips and information are the following. As far as using the free version of Canvas, to enroll students, you'll want to check out the page, how do I add users to a course in the Canvas instructor, instructor guide at community.canvaslms.com. And how you enroll students if you are using that free version will depend on if your institution is using um, that version of Canvas institution-wide wide, and that there is an administrator and using SIS imports, or if you're using this more on your own, then you'll need to use open registration and send invites to your students by email. There are free mobile apps for um, both students and teachers to use. They're not perfect, okay? Um, so if you do have your students using mobile apps, and we know that our students often are using phones or tablets, you should install both the teacher and the student app and see what things look like because they do look different on an app. And you may want to go back onto your computer and change your design a bit. So um, you can get more information and guides on using the apps, again, at the Instructure Community website, um, community.canvaslms.com. You go to Canvas Guides and Canvas Mobile for tutorials. Finally, there is Canvas Commons. Um, Commons is a place where you can find all kinds of shared content that other teachers have um, willingly and generously shared. Anything from entire courses to quizzes to learning activities. Um, so if you go there, you can import some of that content straight into your Canvas course. You just go log into Canvas and from the global navigation in your dashboard, select the Commons button to access Canvas Commons. Finally, if you have any questions about using Canvas, there is a great instructure community at community.canvaslms.com. There are all kinds of guides, both text and video tutorials, a question forum, troubleshooting information, information about the mobile apps, even Canvas guides for students. From the global navigation in your dashboard, select the help button as well to access resources and the training services portal. Good luck using Canvas in your online teaching. Thank you for joining me.